All right. Good afternoon, everybody, and, and welcome to the fourth of our 10-part series, Conversations with the College. Uh, my name is Greg Fansler, and I serve as Executive Director of Engagement and Alumni Relations here at Missouri State. And, um, and I really appreciate all of you who joining us from multiple states uh, to be part of this conversation with our college. And today's college is the College of Education. Um, we created this series to give an alumni the opportunity to connect with and, and hear from our college deans and the vice president of student affairs. Our deans and the vice president of student affairs are, are excited to share with you what is happening on campus today. We want to celebrate some of our recent achievements, and we also want to paint a picture for what the future holds for Missouri State. Through this conversation series, our senior administrators will illustrate the impact alumni and friends have had on their respective colleges and the academic units as part of our Onward Upward campaign. Now, this impact translates into new buildings, scholarships, professorships, and much more. And thank you to all of you who have supported Missouri State throughout our capital campaign. And thank you for tuning in today to hear from Dean Barry Tinkler, to hear more about what's happening in the College of Education. Now, I would like to thank Angie Rowe, who's our Advancement Strategic Communications and Content Specialist for her help and coordination of this series. Appreciate you, Angie. She's on the back end for us and running, running point. Um, also, as you begin to hear from Dean Tinkler and throughout her presentation, Please think of questions to ask. You'll be able to use the Q&A function or chat and let us know uh, as, as you maybe hear her presentation, um, share some thoughts and, and we'll get to those following her remarks. It is now my pleasure to introduce our special guest, Dean Barry Tinkler, who's turned on her camera. We all see her here. Uh, Dean Tinkler came to Missouri State in 2019 and began her work here as Associate Dean for the College of Education. Dean Tinkler got her Bachelor of Arts in History Education from Northeastern State University, and then she got on a plane and went to Papua New Guinea and served in the Peace Corps. Um, when she came back to America, she started her Master of Science at the, at the Oklahoma State University and also taught social studies at the junior high school there in Stillwater. Um, while when she got her master's, she went on to the University of Denver to get her PhD in philosophy at the, at the University of Denver uh, in downtown there. Um, after she um, got her PhD, she served as assistant professor of education at Shepherd University for four years. And when she left Shepherd, she went to become associate professor for the College of Education and Social Services at the University of Vermont. Burlington is a beautiful town. While she was in at the University of Vermont, she, she was a bright fellow through Brown University, and she was a Fulbright Scholar um, in Canada at the University of Calgary. Um, so that brings her up to 2019, where she again joined Missouri State as Associate Dean and uh, became the Interim Dean in 2021 before becoming the Permanent Dean March 1 of this year. Congratulations on your deanship. Dean Pinkler, and we're excited to, for that you're here with us this afternoon. Please take it away. Thank you, Greg. So I'm going to share my screen so you can see my PowerPoint here. All right, so as many of you on this webinar probably know, Missouri State was founded in 1905 as the fourth district normal school with a mission to prepare teachers. And that legacy is a point of pride for our college. I wanna start off with giving you a brief overview of where the college is today. And I'll weave in some of the ways that donors have supported our work as part of the Onward and Upward campaign. We have three academic departments. Two of those are housed in historic Hill Hall that was renovated in 2018. Whenever you're on campus, make sure to come by and see the building. They did a beautiful job in the renovations. Uh, we no longer have a swimming pool in the basement, um, but I have heard that the Hill Hall ghost is still around. I just haven't had any experiences with that, which, which I'm glad about. And our third department is housed downtown in the Park Central office building. So we typically have about 2,100 students each year in our undergraduate and graduate programs. We continue to be the largest producer of teachers in the state. 
and we graduate on average between four and 500 teachers a year. And in fact, one in eight teachers in Missouri schools have a degree from Missouri State. In addition to the three academic departments, we have a number of other units that are housed within the college. Um, one is the Agency for Teaching, Leading and Learning. And the ATLL is a professional, regional professional development center that's funded by grants for the Missouri Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. And they serve 94 school districts in Southwest Missouri. We also house the Bear Power Program, and that program is a five semester program for adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities. And they're currently working to expand the program to a four year program. Um, for that program, private funds have been an integral part of the growth of that program, and those private donors will be integral to that proposed expansion to a four year program. We also house the Child Development Center, which is an on campus child care center that opened in 1964. And it's for children from age six weeks to five years old. And donor, donor support has been important to the center over the years and most recently um, provided a new play, playground for the CDC. Within uh, the Department of Counseling Leadership and Special Education, we have the Center City Counseling Clinic and that was established, established over 20 years ago. It's housed downtown in the Park Central Office building, building, and it offers counseling services to adults, teens, and children ages two and up. And those sessions are provided by our counseling graduate students who are completing their practicum and internships. These services are provided on a sliding scale or for free, and many of the clients that they serve in the counseling center are dealing with housing insecurity. Also housed within the college is the Greenwood Laboratory School that opened in 1908, so just shortly after um, the fourth district normal school was founded. Greenwood has 400 students in grades K through 12, and they have very engaged parents and a very engaged alumni network who provide generous donations to the school. Donors provided the funding for the Betty and Bobby Allison Event Center at Greenwood, uh, that opened last year. Bobby Allison was the primary donor, and there were also many other donors who contributed to the center. Greenwood was able to have their first commencement in the center last spring. Proximate to Greenwood is a one-room schoolhouse, and if any of you have been by the building recently, you'll see that it's being repaired, and some of these costs were being paid for through donor funds, and so this great picture here is what it looked like when it was originally built and, and we're getting it back to that condition shortly. I wanna highlight a few things that are happening within our academic departments. In the Department of Childhood Education and Family Studies, we have five program areas. The elementary education program continues to be the largest program in our college. And it has continued to increase offerings through our eight outreach campuses, where they offer degree programs at regional sites that are convenient for adult learners. In the fall, they added an outreach campus at Crowder College in Webb City. And the outreach program at Missouri State West Plains continues to be our largest elementary outreach program. The Department of Reading Foundations and Technology has six program areas, and we reinstated our business education certification program recently, and we already have several students admitted to that program, so we're very excited about that. We also transitioned our Master of Arts in Teaching program to be fully online, and this program is a certification program for individuals who have a bachelor's degree and want to become certified teachers. And now that it's online, students have the option to complete the program from a distance. And that's been very helpful because we have some students who are working to earn their master's degree while they're working in the classroom on a provisional teaching certificate. So we've been happy that we've been able to partner with school districts to keep some provisionally certified teachers in the school while they're completing the degree and certification. In the Department of Counseling, Leadership, and Special Education, we have four program areas. Special education continues to be a high shortage area within the state, 
and the special education program has developed a degree pathway for paraprofessionals to pursue a bachelor's degree and certification as a special educator while continuing in their paraprofessional position. We use their paraprofessional role to count toward the practicum and student teaching requirements. And we've also developed a process for them to complete some of their coursework in collaboration with their school district through a prior learning assessment process. So faculty in the pathways programs applied to the Department of Labor to have this program designated as an apprenticeship program. And that was approved. And this has opened up some funding possibilities for students to help defray tuition costs for those students. And it has also opened up partnership opportunities and connections in workforce development. We've also had some generous donors this past year who've endowed scholarships that provide tuition support to students in the special education program. And we greatly appreciate that because we are doing everything we can to try to address shortage areas in special education. As we look to the future of the college, we're focusing our efforts on trying to work to recruit more teachers into the profession in general, given the ongoing and intensifying teacher shortage. We've also focused on pursuing funds to defray costs for our future teachers. Our goal is to try to decrease their debt burden as they graduate so that it will be easier for them to stay in the teaching profession. Over the past year, I've worked with the leadership in the college to promote teacher recruitment and partnerships with school districts across the region. One of our ongoing initiatives that has been very successful is our internship academy program and you'll see a group of our students here who completed the program a year ago. The students who participate in this program are placed with one of the internship academy schools for a full year of full-time student teaching and, and this is different because student teaching is typically one semester full-time and these students complete a full year of student teaching. And the students who complete this program come out of the program very well prepared to teach and they get hired very quickly. We've continued to expand this program. And as we've expanded, we've been pursuing opportunities to provide some pay to the interns as they complete the program. Most of our students work along with being full-time students and they can't work as much if they're doing the full year internship. Our school district partners have been very creative in providing some pay for substitute teaching and we've also been exploring other options for providing financial support for these students so we can broaden participation in the program. Another partnership that we've developed recently is with the Springfield Public Schools Teaching as a Profession Teacher Career Pathways Program. So they're gradually expanding this pathway program to all of the high schools in the district. And we've been working with SPS on curriculum alignment to provide dual credit opportunities for high school students in teacher education coursework. In December, we signed an MOU with SPS for a Grow Your Own partnership. And as part of this partnership, SPS is contributing forgivable loans um, to students who participate with an agreement that they come back and teach within the school district for several years post-graduation. And we're currently collaborating with SPS to recruit the first uh, cohort of students that will begin in the fall of 2022. We've also been working um, to continue to build partnerships with rural schools in this region. And we were invited by the Rural School Collaborative and the Community Foundation of the Ozarks to participate in a project that's funded by the Gates Foundation and it's called the Rural Imperative Initiative. And as part of this work, we're hosting a rural teacher caucus. So we have eight teachers from area rural schools and we're meeting with those teachers regularly and facilitating dialogues with that group of teachers to build recommendations for a policy playbook that the Rural Schools Collaborative plans to use for programmatic and policy advocacy efforts. And, <clears throat> excuse me, those conversations have been very impactful for us in thinking about how we can better prepare our teachers for working effectively in rural school districts. We've also continued to focus on expanding our alumni network of educators that we call a bear in every building. 
We now have close to 13 educators that have joined. And as I mentioned at the beginning, one in eight teachers in Missouri schools are graduates from MSU. So we're very happy to maintain our connections with our alums across the state. So one final initiative that I wanna to touch on as um, that we're currently working to develop is a focus on principles of sustainability within the college. So MSU defines sustainability as meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. And we're currently developing ideas about how to integrate a focus on sustainability throughout our curriculum that's tied to place-based pedagogy and an awareness of our natural environment. And because of a generous donation from Bob and Barb Kipfer, we now have an amazing location, um, the Bull Mills property, to move forward some of this work. The Bull Mills property has been an important research site for faculty across the university. And Bob and Barb have been advocates for K-12 education through their collaboration with the SPS Wolf School and other educational initiatives. And we look forward to continuing to work with Bob and Barb to move this work forward. So thank you for letting me share some of the work of our college with you today. And I think we now have some time for questions. So Greg, I'll stop sharing my screen so that we can move on to questions. All right. So for those of you out there, um, enjoyed this presentation. Thank you, Dean, uh, Dean Tinkler. Um, please go on and type a question in here. Um, I'll start with one. Um, Dean Tinkler, um, one in eight teachers, uh, one in eight of, of, of all teachers in Missouri are graduates of Missouri State. That's just an impressive number um, to consider. And, and you touched on um, bear in every building. Uh, talk about that program and how we how we connect with the our alumni who are in the field and educating the minds of the future. Yeah. So the the initial initiative started officially. It was interesting. It started officially. The kickoff was August first, two thousand nineteen, which it was my first day working at Missouri State University. So the first day, of, my first day of work, I got to um, go to an event kicking off this. Um, partnership with our alums, and it was um, great to see the excitement and the enthusiasm that our alums have for Missouri State. I think I heard many stories that night about people's recollection of the quality of the faculty that they worked with and how well prepared that they feel they felt to go out into the fields as teachers. And so initially we had several events um, where we brought alumni together from across the state. Um, part of what we did as, as someone signs up to be an alum in our Bear in Every Building initiative, we send them um, we send them some swag, we send them a t-shirt, a uh, flat boomer, some other fun things um, that they can include in their classroom. And part of what we ask them to do as being part of this network is to promote teaching as, as a profession and to encourage um, potential future teachers to think about Missouri State as an option um, mm -hmm. for pursuing their teaching degree. And so we've continued to reach out to our alums. Um, we're working to try to um, plan another event, hopefully this summer, where we can get everyone together and um, continue to have some uh, conversations and collegial time together to talk about the work that we're doing. And so that's that's primarily where we are right now. We have a, a committee of faculty who lead that initiative that's led by Dr. Rhonda Bishop, who is herself an alum of our programs. And um, so we're very excited about continuing to grow that program. Wow. You know, that I've heard recently that Missouri State is the number one choice for Missouri high school graduates. And I'm wondering if this is part of the, if this program is part of the equation for that success in that metric. So um, thank you and congratulations on that. Tell us about um, um, how can alumni get involved with the College of Education? Um, is there a newsletter that you send out? Is there a board? Is there, how can people reach out and, and connect with you and um, in, in your department heads? Yeah, so there there is a newsletter. So we put out a monthly newsletter and we do send that out to all of our 
bears at every building um, so that you know they can keep up with what we're doing within the college. And we also like to highlight the work of alumni in that newsletter as well. So you'll see story of, stories about alums. So if you are an alum and you have something exciting that you'd like to share with us, please send it along and we'll include that in our newsletter and it'll get sent out to everyone who signed up for our Bear and Every Building Network. Um, also, we do have a Dean's Advisory Council that typically meets once a semester. And that advisory council includes individuals working in schools across the region. And many times um, those individuals are alums of our program, as well as serving as school teachers or administrators in local area schools. And um, so there is an opportunity to give us feedback and input on some of the initiatives that we're working on at that time. And we're getting ready to schedule the next one for the spring that should be coming up in May. And we'll be sending out invitations to school districts across the area to be part of that um, Deeds Advisory Council meeting for May. Okay. Um, we do have a question in from Josh Chastain. Josh, thanks for your question. How does the college intend to continue encouraging students to be part of the internship opportunities? Yeah, and, and, and one of our partners with the Internship Academy program that, that I mentioned earlier is Nixa Public Schools, and they've been a, a great partner with us from the beginning. Um, we do to, you know, to continue, plan to continue to support that initiative and, and encourage students to participate. One of the things that we've been doing in terms of outreach in general for um, getting to, you know, working toward recruitment into teaching we've reinitiated a program that we call Bears Teach. In the past, it was called um, Bear Partnership and we've renamed that as Bears Teach. And it's a week long summer immersion opportunity that will be happening this summer. Um, we've started it up again um, post COVID and it's, it will be June 14th through the 18th. And we'll be bringing students from across the state to campus for a week long experience to um, introduce them to the university, but also to introduce them to possibilities around majoring in education and the teaching profession. And so that's one of our recruitment efforts that we're, that we're pursuing right now. Um, we're also working with um, school partners around grow your own initiatives. Um, you know, Springfield Public Schools is one example, but we also have other school partners that are interested in working with us um, to think about how we can move so forward some grow your own initiatives that allow students to get some funding support while they're going through school, but then um, require that obligation to go back and teach within the school district post graduation. And so we're having conversations around those with other school districts and very open to partnering with any school district that wants to work with us on those kinds of, of grow your own partnerships. Thank you, that makes sense, okay. Uh, how about Greenwood? That's in your portfolio. Um, talk about that and any successes that you maybe didn't get a chance to touch on uh, what, in the partnership that we have with them. Yeah, so Greenwood has been an important part of the college for you know almost since its inception and um, we place many students there for practicum and student teaching. So we have uh, many of our students that are spending time over in Greenwood learning about effective teaching practice. And um, in turn, Greenwood shares some of their expertise with us in terms of um, understanding best practices around um, various things. Um, they've done a lot of great work within their science education program they had um, an upgrade to their science facility several years ago that was funded by donors and they've, they've got some exceptional facilities over there and they're doing great work around inquiry-based science. Um, and so they're doing really good work over there that benefits our students to see and to grow and learn from. And so um, there's, you know, it's a very synergistic relationship that we have. And we're continuing to work on how do we build greater reciprocity in that relationship. And that's an ongoing conversation and dialogue. And, and Greenwood's very important to the history of many individuals in the Springfield community. I, there are a number of um, engaged alums from Greenwood who have, um, who they're, you know, they 
they went to Greenwood, their children and their grandchildren. And so there's a long legacy and connection to Greenwood um, within the Springfield communication community. And we greatly value that and appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I'm just gonna keep asking questions. Someone better do something else out there because these questions may not suit you. Um, but um, I have one about the dynamics of the student and the profile of the student that comes to Missouri State and enrolls in the, in the College of Education. Do you see people moving to and from colleges um, through, throughout or, or once you, people are just destined, they know they wanna be a teacher or be involved or associated with one of the departments under your portfolio? Um, how, how does how does that occur? Do you as as students evolve and, and may be inspired to do something differently because of the well-rounded experience here at Missouri State? Yeah, you know we do have um, students who come into our program directly and are very sure that they want to be teachers, but we do have transfer students, some who come internally from other colleges within the university that. Um, you know, they're, they may be pursuing a content discipline within a field like mathematics or science or English or social studies, and then decide that they want to pursue teaching um, as a way to um, continue that love of learning around that content discipline. And so we do get transfer students into the college, both internally and externally. We have a lot of transfer students that come from Missouri State West Plains and as well from OTC here in the Springfield region. Um, so most of our students come from the state of Missouri, but we do have out-of-state students as well, some coming from Oklahoma, the Tulsa region, um, and other states, Illinois, and, and other surrounding states. Uh, but a lot of our students um, are regional students and are students who are very interested in going back and teaching in their home district, and, and we really encourage that. Um, you know, we do have a number of rural school partners in the area, and they sometimes are challenged to, um, to hire and retain teachers. So we're doing everything we can to partner with those rural schools to think about how we can keep teachers in the region. Nice. Well, um, certainly there's an esteem, there's a bunch of esteemed alumni and alumni who are out um, in the workforce. We're recognizing um, Janice Dye uh, this year as a Bear, Bear of Excellence Award recipient um, who's uh, served the Waynesville area for some time now um, um, throughout her career. And so thank you for uh, to the College of Education for making an impact across Missouri. Um, my final question, well, no, there's one here. Explain a little bit more, um, and this is from Patty Clausen, explain a little bit more about the Rural Imperative Initiative. Yeah, yeah, I'd be happy to do that. So. Um, so the Rural Schools Collaborative um, is working um, in concert with the Community Foundation of the Ozarks and the National Rural Education Association to support this initiative. And what they're doing is they're supporting um, these rural teacher caucuses in multiple regions across the United States. And we were asked to, um, to serve the rural teacher caucus within this region of um, the Ozarks. And so, we're bringing teachers together. We're having dialogues about um, their work within schools, and you know what? Are, what is their vision for education within a rural school setting? Um, what are some of the barriers that they are um, encountering to facilitating that vision? And then, what are some policies that could help support um, the growth and um, and continued um, success of rural schools? And what we're going to be doing, so we've, we've met four times with our Rural Teacher Caucus and we're getting ready to have our fifth meeting next week. And we're putting together a set of policy recommendations that will go to the Rural Schools Collaborative. And the Rural Schools Collaborative is going to take um, those policy recommendations from all of their Rural Teacher Caucuses from across the country. And they will use that as, as part of their work for um, programmatic advocacy and policy advocacy as well. And um, that is a, that project is funded by the Gates Foundation. Nice. And the Rural Teacher Caucus is one piece of it, but there's there are other components of the work. Um, there's um, They've started a, a virtual Rural Teacher Job Board. So that's a piece of it um, where rural schools across the country can post positions. Um, they've started a um, sort of a 
teacher storytelling initiative called I Am a Rural Teacher, where rural teachers can tell their story and, the, and they're posting that on their website so that people can get a sense of what it's like to teach in a rural school. So, so there are different facets of it, but the, we're, the piece we're involved in is that rural teacher caucus component. Mm, important work. Uh, great question, Patty. Thanks for, for asking it. Um, and, and I guess while we close out here, can you just talk about the future of the College of Education? What do you see uh, will be um, will be something that's down the road if you want to um, give the folks here an inside tip about what you see in the future for the College of Education and what to expect? Yeah, you know, I think um, we are going to continue to focus on trying to recruit as many teachers as we can into the profession. And you know, across the country, um, enrollment in teacher education programs has gone down. That uh, while our enrollment has declined a little, it hasn't has de it hasn't declined as substantially as it has in teacher education across the country. And and part of that we think is because of the quality of our programs and the quality of our faculty. And often our faculty are on the cutting edge of of new initiatives that are happening around the state. And um, to give an example of something that we're thinking about as we move forward is a focus on competency-based learning. So I'm currently part of a state working group that is looking at developing a framework for competency-based learning within K-12 schools um, across the state of Missouri. And one of our alums, actually, Michael Fulton, who is a graduate of our elementary education program, is one of the co-chairs of that initiative. And if that, um, if that framework is adopted by DESE and if the state moves forward with that work, that will be a transformational change that will be happening across the state in terms of the way that we teach and the way that we assess student learning. And we have teachers within our college who are already doing work around um, that around some of these prin principles of, of competency-based learning that will definitely support us if we transition into that frame of thinking. Um, we have teachers in our, our faculty in our elementary education program that have been used, using principles of what's called ungrading. So the idea of, of helping look at where learners are and helping them move forward. Um, so not thinking of assessment as an endpoint, but as a, as a formative and ongoing process. And so that's one of the things that is on the horizon for us and that will be challenging, but also very exciting, and I think could lead to transformative change in K-12 education in the state. Exciting, exciting. Well, Dean Tinkler, I'm gonna pull you off the hot seat for a second here. Sorry if, I, if it was an arduous uh, Q&A. Um, so thank you, to the, thank you to the alumni who asked questions. Uh, and Brent uh, Dunn, we're gonna call on to, to say hello. Um, and ladies and gentlemen, um, our Vice President for Advancement, and executive director of the Missouri State Foundation, Mr. Brenda. Well, thank you, uh, Dean Tinkler, and, and thank you for joining us. All this um, work in the colleges, College of Education and other colleges, um, in the difference we make in terms of scholarships and various other programs, private support is, is critical. And we're in the Onward Upward campaign that was open to the public uh, in October 2019, and we're concluding that campaign October 29th of this year. Uh, the goal to raise $250 million for a variety of things at the university, from scholarships uh, to program support to faculty support and capital support, and, and all those things uh, affect the College of Education as well. Uh, so my only um, commercial here is for you to put October 29th down on the calendar. That is homecoming, um, a lot of uh, fun stuff that normally happens at homecoming will occur from the parade, football game, a lot of reunions, et cetera. Uh, but that evening on October 29th, which is a Saturday at JQH Arena, we'll have a special celebration uh, and showing sort of, uh, you know, like you see in real estate, the, the before and after, after renovation, after, uh, people invested in certain programs and what that looks like. And we want you to join our campaign chairman, uh, John Goodman, uh, and a lot of other people uh, from all over the state uh, and to uh, share in the celebration. And again, we'd ask your support uh, throughout this year to make the College of Education uh, even better. And it does take obviously state support, 
takes our tuition from students, but it takes private support as well uh, to make a difference in the lives of students. So we hope uh, you put that date down on your calendar. Greg, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, sir. And again, thank you to everybody for your support and care uh, of Missouri State, of the Department of, of the Department, the College of Education, um, in the Department of Education. I, I know the state needs money too, uh, but uh, uh, in the chat, you'll see uh, our, our, um, our, our upcoming series. Um, next week, we have two conversations. We'll have a conversation with the Dean of Libraries, Mr. Tom Peters, and the, and the Dean of the College of Business, uh, um, Dave Mearnard there. So um, we're looking forward to you all. Please join us if you're interested in, in, in either of those two um, areas on campus. Um, the libraries will be Tuesday, April 5th, and College of Business will be April 7th. Uh, Dean Tinkler, uh, I will turn it to you for last words, uh, thoughts, wisdom that you'd like to share with the audience. Thank you, Greg. I, I just want to close out with saying um, thank you to everyone that attended. And uh, it's always fun to talk about the good work that we're doing in the college. And if you'd like to be involved in that work in some way, feel free to reach out. We're always happy to have alums um, engage with our programs and our initiatives. So thank you so much and um, uh, look forward to seeing some of you in the future. Indeed, indeed. Thank you all again for joining and tuning in. I hope to see you next week. And, and Dean Tinkler, thank you for your time and for sharing the good news that's happening in, in the College of Education. Take care, everybody, and go Bears.